This week on The Splash, bourbon and brews at Bowers Farm, a leadership breakfast for local businesses, and we keep motivated for the cloudier seasons. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories, all so that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash, I'm Maddie Mustchen. Bowers Farm has been educating the youth on agricultural work all throughout COVID. But last weekend, Pals and Buds Above 21 came out to sample the suds to help raise funds for scholarships, field trips, and more. The annual Bourbon and Brews event took place on the 97-acre Bowers Farm that featured over 200 craft beers, bourbons, cocktails, and wine. Local food truck vendors and entertainment made the night one to remember. Reporter Calvin Brown has a story. Move over, drinking at home in a dark, dank, thankless concrete room, and say hello to drinking out on the range. Bowers Farm was hopping with hops last weekend as I attended their fundraiser for adults only, the Bourbon and Brews Festival. I sat down with Alan Jaros, director of Bowers Farm and the Johnson Nature Center, to talk about how they intend to use the funds raised, as well as their role in the community. Uh, the farm here is owned by the Bloomfield Hills Schools and we serve anywhere from 40 to 50,000 visitors a year. Most of those are in our school programs. Um, that's our mission-focused work. And so when we can branch out from that and bring uh, adults onto the property for an evening of uh, fun, it sort of changes the feel, the vibe on the farm. Mm -hmm. Our mission is that we are open to all, regardless. So we hope to expand our field trip program regionally. Not only do they plan to enhance their field trip program, but also enhance the in-person agricultural studies the children partake in almost daily. In our blood, every one of us, we have agrarian roots. They're somewhere there, right? We grew food. And being that we, you know, times are different, we still crave that connection. And, and you see it when people get here, they light up. For example, during camp, what, you know, one of, every day those kids are in the garden, they harvest produce, they take it back, and they cook with it in the kitchen. Talk about life skills, right? Those are things that we don't just don't do in the classroom anymore. And in the, in the context of the farm, all the way to the table, it's real here. It's, it's authentic. And so, you know, we're, we're proud, and the team is really proud that we're able to, to bring those experiences to young people and to adults. Maybe a little different tonight with the 200 different bourbon whiskeys, but hey, those are agricultural products as well. <laughs> And what an amazing product it is. I sampled plenty of beverages, and it's easy to say there wasn't a single sour sip amongst all the alcohol I sampled. Yeah. Except for stouts. I'm not a fan of stouts. Yeah, no, the, the event is going, is, is going swimmingly. <laughs> uh, people are very happy. Uh, we just about sold out tickets. And uh, next year, I expect we'll do it again. I think the takeaway here is, you know, there are a number of farms in the area, and what we pride ourselves on here is that everything has a purpose. All 93 acres here has a reason that it exists. So our goats give us milk. Our horses are here to ride. Our pigs, well, you can buy bratwurst in the farm store. Uh, but, but what we hope to show you and what we highlight and what we're open about is the fact that the animals are raised sustainably, the produce we grow, three acres of vegetable production, is in a sustainable manner. And so when you know how your food is grown, you make food choices that are healthier for the planet, healthier for people, and healthier for the people that, that grow your food for you. And so where else do you get to have that experience? So I invite people to come to the farm and check it out for themselves and shop in our store and um, have a great time with their family, wagon ride, donuts. Yeah, and I appreciate you know, the, this event and events like this that allows us to do that mission work. With great music, good weather, and gallons upon gallons of booze to guzzle, the Bourbon and Brews event at Bowers Farm is one you should check the almanac for next year. With the success of this year's event, Last Call is nowhere in sight. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Calvin Brown. You can find more information at our website at civiccentertv.com slash bourbonandbrews21. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused stress and isolation among many of the greater West Bloomfield businesses. The Chamber of Commerce looked to solve this problem by hosting a leadership breakfast for local businesses to safely gather and collaborate. Guest speaker Casey Crane and Roop Raj shared their stories and advice about navigating workspaces and increasing collaboration at work. 
I attended the breakfast to hear what advice they had to give to business owners during this time. With the COVID-19 pandemic affecting the collaborative environments within local businesses, the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce hosted a leadership breakfast with MCs Rup Raj and Casey Crane to encourage and inspire business owners. Pandemic started rolling out and we'd say, okay, you know, this brand in Chicago, go work from home for a week, make sure the system's checked out. Our last brand we sent home in New York never came back. So we had to do this, you know, same thing and it, and it happened very quickly. Now you think about, you know, a lot of this office space, as people are coming back, I think it's going to be a reuse of space. So when you think about the repurpose of space, um, yes, I think that, you know, some folks are going to take more space and make it more like this, make it collaborative, make it, you know, coming out of a year and a half of sitting at home, drinking your coffee, listening to your music with your dog, and you're going to tell me I'm going to go sit in a cube for eight hours a day, you're nuts. And you're going to lose people. But for the most part, the leaders in our business and a lot of the other CEOs I talked to are saying we're losing collaboration. Maybe it's not a ton of productivity, but it's definitely collaboration. And when, especially when you're working in technology, that's everything. But the bottom line is, you know, when you're in the newsroom and you're actually saying to somebody, hey, I'm interviewing the governor at three o'clock and, 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 and a reporter walks by and says, hey, don't forget to ask her about this. And I said, no, why would we ask her about that when we ask about this? And there's friction. And that's where real journalism comes from is actual ideas that, that not, it's not all, and everyone agrees with each other. It's where someone says, this is a priority. No, I think this is. And that, those conversations aren't happening on Zoom. No. Um, and I just think that we gotta get away from this model of look how much we're producing, and instead of looking at, like, look at the long-term effect of, of not collaborating. Casey Crane and Rup Raj also talked about the importance of business news and news reporting in today's age of technology and media. I love being in the position I'm in because I get to report on all of your businesses. Uh, so it's, it's fascinating to see in the cross sections between finance, healthcare, automotive, manufacturing, marketing, um, you know, we're in a really unusual, unique position right now. Um, and I think, I mean, the amount of wealth that's being created through technology and, you know, it's a point in time that I think uh, will be on the map forever, like the financial crisis. I think this is kind of the other way. Um, it's a great time to be an entrepreneur and you know to be able to uh, to grow a business. So, you know, media has been just you know I mean painted with a very very negative brush. And you know even for our company, you know we try and act like we're outside of it because we're business news. But the journalists still take it really personally. I mean you know uh, reporters are under attack constantly. Um, but you know we've got to keep pushing it, and I have to work on it really hard in, in our own company even just to keep everybody motivated. Because you know they're out there and everybody's bashing the media, um, so I think to try and get these younger people excited about it, we go the technology route. The Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce Leadership Breakfast allowed local businesses to connect with entrepreneurs in their community and left them with great advice and newfound connections. Reporting for the Splash, I'm Maddie Muschin. For more information, you can visit civiccentertv.com/leadershipbreakfast21. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll get advice on keeping motivated this fall. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. The exact path of the storm may not be certain, but what is certain are the steps you can take to get ready. Make a plan. Outline contact information and evacuation routes. Download emergency alerts to your phone. Listen to directions and updates from local authorities. Have conversations with your loved ones. Discuss steps to prepare with family, friends, and neighbors. Visit ready.gov for tips to prepare to protect yourself and others. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Maddie Muschin. Keeping motivated is always tough as the seasons turn from sunny and warm to cloudy and cold. Splash reporter Tyler Keeft recently spoke to a local motivation expert to help you get prepared and motivated for the fall. You know, some days I find it really easy to come in here, get all my prep work done, and be ready to host another exciting edition of the Megacast. Other days I'm just frazzled or I'm lacking motivation. What I need to do is reimagine my routine and refocus my energy to things more positive. 
As the seasons change and we spend less time with our good old friend, the sun, it can become easy to lose your motivation and succumb to a case of the blues. I recently spoke with motivation expert Stacy Renee for some tips on curbing those blues and keeping your mindset sunny side up as we head into the colder months. Her number one tip was to shift your focus to the positive in your life, focusing on your best wins rather than your most crushing losses. Positive thoughts, positive outcomes. Negative thoughts, negative outcomes. And you have to make a choice of what you want. Set goals for the day, even if it's just three. And when you go to bed at night, Sit there and think about your day, but not about all the things that you didn't do. Think about all the things that you did do and the exciting things that you're going to do the next day. Also, take time for yourself. You have to do that, and it's okay. And respect yourself. Keeping your thoughts positive can be challenging, which is why it is important to start your day by making it a routine to identify the good in your life and goals that you hope to accomplish in the day ahead. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you should do is not grab your phone, go out to the kitchen or brush your teeth or do your morning like tiny little one minute routine and then write down three things that you're going to be grateful for today before you even pick up your phone. So write three goals down, write three things that you appreciate and that's really not a hard thing to do. And you're setting the tone, you're setting for a great day. So no matter what, even if it's just making your bed and you come home and you get to come in after a really hard day, you see that you made your bed. You accomplished something. We all have a lot of goals in our life and in a world that is constantly on the move, it can be tough to take a moment to slow down and make some time just for yourself. Something Stacy Renee urges is vital to living a positive lifestyle. And it's okay to sit back, relax, and enjoy. And I fell asleep on the couch this weekend when I went to uh, see my dad, and it was great. And I thought, well, when's the last time I've actually been able to do that? It's been a long time. Did I regret it? Nope. All I did is I got up the next morning and just made happen what needed to happen. It's your body and your mind, they do need a rest. So. Take that time for yourself and own it. Enjoy it. Like everything else in life, setting goals and staying motivated is a balancing act between striving for accomplishment and taking care of yourself. As long as you believe that there are better days ahead, there will be. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Tyler Keefe. To find out more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash fallmotivation. Halloween is a wild and spooky time so we asked some boils and ghouls what their favorite thing about Halloween is on this edition of Testing the Waters. My favorite part of Halloween is all the creative costumes. Greater West Bloomfield, what's your favorite part of Halloween? Um, definitely, I feel like it gives people like the freedom to like be what they want to be, like be their favorite character that they like are obsessed with, or like be like their favorite childhood character. So I think that's cool. Frankenstein is one of my favorite things about Halloween. I think the time of the year, oh, the candy, excuse me, the candy, but the time of the year, it's another transition going from fall into winter, and winter's another wonderful season. We're very lucky living in Michigan. Um, everybody dressing up in costumes? Um, definitely the pumpkins, the pumpkin spice coffee, and corn mazes, of course. Whether it's the costumes, the party, or the candy, we know it's going to be a fun Halloween in Greater West Bloomfield, and then we'll be back, still, testing the waters. For more episodes of Testing the Waters, visit civiccentertv.com's On Demand page. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, I'll talk with Megan Kernat, Marketing Manager for West Bloomfield Parks. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Let's catch up, not online or over text. Let's catch up in a place where time isn't measured in minutes, but in moments. Moments made paddling the day away on a crystal blue waterway, or just sitting around a campfire beneath a canopy of twinkling stars. It's time to make up for lost time. This summer, let's catch up with Pure Michigan. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Maddie Muschin. This week, I'm joined by Marketing Manager for the West Bloomfield Parks, Megan Kernat. 
Megan, thanks for joining us today. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. So you have a big, fun, spooky event coming up this weekend, the Trick or Treat Trails. I know it's a sold out event, but tell us a little bit about what people that are going to be coming to the event will be expecting. Sure, so this is one of our favorite annual traditions here in West Bloomfield. Unfortunately, we weren't able to host it last year due to COVID, so we're very excited to bring it back this year. Uh, I think our residents are also really excited because it's been sold out for weeks and weeks, and we have, I think, 500 people on our wait list. So we wish we could accommodate everyone, but we just can't, unfortunately, this year. Um, so we've broken the event up into four different time slots. So um, there won't be huge numbers of, of people together all at one time. We've kind of spread it, spread it around throughout the afternoon. Uh, and so um, families show up for their time slot, they get their bags, and then they just walk around the paved path at Marsh Bank Park, uh, stopping along the way to visit with all of our local businesses and nonprofit partners and civic partners. Um, so they have all kinds of goodies they'll be handing out to the kids. Uh, and then there's also a cider and donut station for the kids, as well as a pumpkin weight guessing contest that we have some really cool prizes uh, that have been donated from our local business partners. And will the West Bloomfield Park staff members be dressing up? And if so, what will you be wearing? Uh, yes, dressing up is strongly encouraged amongst all of our staff, and we definitely have fun with it. Uh, this year, I'm throwing on an M&M. Uh, it's important to find a costume that you can have lots of layers under, because we're going to be outside for many hours. Um, although the weather does look really good this year. So um, yes, definitely dressing up. Very fun. And then you guys have a couple of other fall events coming up. Will you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have uh, one of our favorite annual traditions as well as our Heroes Appreciation Breakfast. Uh, and that's to really recognize and honor our local veterans. So uh, that's free for veterans and a guest to attend and it's held the Friday before Veterans Day. So this year that's on November 5th and it's in the morning starting at 9 a.m. Uh, we have a great breakfast spread provided by Jagged Fork that we'll have for them. Uh, we have live entertainment. Uh, it's gonna be emceed by WDIV's Jason Colthorpe. Uh, we'll have the honor guard there. So it's just a really great day or morning to celebrate our veterans and thank them for all that they've done for us. Uh, so definitely pre-register for that. That one will definitely sell out. So you can do that online or give us a call at our main line and we'll be happy to get you registered. Uh, and then the other event I wanted to mention is a newer event for us. We hosted it for the first time last year uh, and it's our winter solstice event. So it takes place on the winter solstice, which is December 21st, and it's held at night. So it's kind of fun because it's completely at night and um, we light our trail in the Civic Center complex with lanterns and we do all kinds of glow activities. So we have a glowing craft, we have um, a, a ice carving that will be glowing. Uh, and then the Oakland Astronomy Club will be here to help educate. And then we have nature stations along the trail um, for families to stop at and learn about uh, some of the winter solstice traditions that take place uh, throughout the world. So um, this is our second year hosting the event. So we're really excited to have it back. Um, and we've added more things from last year. Uh, so make sure you check that out. It's December 21st um, from 5 to 7 p.m. right in our main Civic Center complex. Very exciting. and with. COVID kind of letting everything open back up again. Your senior center, the Connect Center, has o also opened back up. Will you tell us a little bit about what we can experience there? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we were so happy to be able to finally reopen Connect. Uh, and we, the people have just been coming in droves, which is so great. We were ready for it. And it's it's been really fun to host all these programs that are just jam packed. So um, we have plenty of uh, drop-in programs going on throughout the week. So those you can just swing in um, check our schedule out online. Uh, so there's ping pong, stretch and tone, open game room, we have line dancing. Uh, and then we also have kind of fun holiday theme type events. We have a holiday sing along coming up in December. Uh, we do social circles. So we try to offer all kinds of different things for different interests, whether it's fitness or enrichment or cards or just all across the board. So um, if you're a senior in West Bloomfield, we really want you to come in and check us out. Um, you can even just come into the lobby, have some coffee, hang out, meet new friends. Uh, it's really a social place. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Megan, and telling us all about the fun events that you guys have coming up. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Once again, we've been joined by Megan Kernat, Marketing Manager for West Bloomfield Parks. We're going to take one final break, and when we return, we'll spotlight someone from right here in our community who is educating the youth in our community through her work at the West Bloomfield Township Public Library.
Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. We may come from different organizations, but we work together to protect the Huron River for everyone. Most of the pollution that goes into our rivers is carried by rainwater that flows off of roads, parking lots, and rooftops. The leaves and bark of a single tree can retain a surprising amount of rainwater. Depending on its size and species, it could be 100 gallons or more. It is estimated that an urban forest can reduce annual runoff by up to 7%. Here's one thing that we know can help keep our water clean. Plant a tree. Plant a tree. Plant a tree. There's one water and it's ours to protect. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Maddie Mushkin. Now it's time for our final segment, Person of the Week. This is where we highlight special people in our community who are inspiring and providing towards others. This week's recipient is director at the West Bloomfield Township Public Library, Kathy Russ. After receiving her Master's of Library and Information Science at Wayne State University, Kathy Russ has held the position of library director at numerous libraries in southeastern Michigan. Through her hard work and care for the Troy community, Kathy was named Library of the Year in 2019. Kathy has been the director at the West Bloomfield Township Public Library since December of 2020. During her time in West Bloomfield, Kathy has made it her mission to provide library access to all. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, Kathy made an effort to help make the public library a safe place for people to rent books and since June of 2020, a place to come read and study. Kathy's love for the West Bloomfield community and reading literacy has elevated the West Bloomfield Township Public Library to now include virtual programs to keep our community members safe. Kathy's passion for reading and providing education for our West Bloomfield community is why we are naming her our Person of the Week. If you know someone who is making a positive difference, let us know and message us on social media with any and all suggestions because we want to congratulate and acknowledge those making a difference in our community. And that's it for this week's show. You can watch new episodes anytime online in HD on civiccentertv.com Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. on Civic Center TV, on Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T Channel 99. Follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Civic Center TV, and Facebook at Civic Center TV 15. For all of our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kegel Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Maddie Mushin. Thank you for watching The Splash. <laughs>